take those. Our goal is to build you holistically. Um, one of the great things is that, you know, we can come here and pray God healing, and we're not doing what it takes to, to be delivered from that. And I believe that that is important that we take our health, our wellness seriously uh, so we could be around so you don't have no sick days, Amen. no bad days. Amen. And so I praise God for you all today. Y'all ready for the word? Amen. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you now for this awesome opportunity that we, your people, can gather in your place. Lord, we are just so grateful for all that is, has been said, done, and will be done in this service and God, we just thank you for this morning, this moment, God, that we have the privilege to impart. Do let the words that will come from my mouth, the very motives and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, God, for you are my strength and my redeemer. God, we are so grateful for every listening ear in this room, online, and even those that will connect with this later. God, I pray that they have an ear to hear what you, the spirit of the almighty God, has to say to the church today. And so, God, feed me on my feet. Give me clarity, knowledge, and understanding of your word so that truth will be revealed and lives are touched, challenged, and changed and never the same. And God, we're glad we don't have to make anything up because you've given it to us clearly so that we can share it freely. And so God, we're thankful for your word this morning. Why? Word that makes us new. Your word that teaches us about you. So make it clear and make it plain. In Jesus' name, can somebody shout amen? amen? Come on, give God your best praise right there real quickly. Amen, amen. All right, y'all know what time it is. Let me see them what? Let me see, let me see, let me see what you're working with. All right, go on and nudge your neighbor over there and say, there you go with your Bible toting self. And let them know if you ain't got one, get one. The ushers got Bibles for you right there. Say, usher, give me one of those because I left mine at home. And we always say if you got more than one that you borrowed from us, please bring the other ones back. Amen. We, you, those are, you get one free one. One free one. Amen. But God bless you all. Ushers, thank you so much for serving. Can y'all give our ushers a hand as they readjust themselves this morning? All right. All right. Well, here we go. I just want to continue to share week number 13 of this sermon series entitled, Jesus Is. Can y'all shout, Jesus is. Jesus is. Amen. And so we've been discussing, I'm telling you, this is week number 13, and I believe I have seven left um, that I can, um, that I believe. Sometimes I, as I get to the end, I thought I would finish this last year, but I, I, I found out so much more about who he is. And every time I go back and we read this and reread this and read it again, I discover even the more about who Jesus is. You know, I, I discovered something in um, just this week as I was reading. I was, I was fascinated um, with the word as it was uh, just jumping off the pages. And, and, and I realized most of us probably um, definitely know this, that Jesus was all God. How many of y'all know that, right? He was all God in the flesh. But I thought about this for a second. He was all God in the flesh, however... He needed God's backing power and permission to perform. Like he was all of God himself, but before he did anything, he always consulted with his father first. You know, and I thought about that power because I would have been equally impressed if God would have did it himself. Like if he didn't have a person that God out of heaven would have just turned um, uh, uh, water in the wine or, or raised the, the dead or healed the sick or fed the multitude to drop manna from heaven. But it was awesome to me because it allowed me to see how he chose a human to perform heaven's work. And it gave me even the more confidence when I thought about who Jesus is. He was God, all God, in the flesh, but he also needed his permission. But it shows how God can use humans to perform heaven's work in the earth. And that gave me more confidence. I don't know about you that if I follow Jesus, I have not only an example, but the example of how to use this physical body to perform heaven's work in the earth. And I believe that the same spirit that possessed and empowered Jesus is the same one living on the inside of us. And that's why we have to know who he is. That's why knowing and following Jesus is so important in our Christian walk because it gives us the example to how to operate 
in our God-given authority. Amen? Because the better we know him, the better we can make him known. So it's hard to talk about somebody you don't know. Anybody ever had that? somebody say, I know somebody, but they really didn't know him? You know, and it, somebody asks you a question about that person, and you, they say, well, where he from then? Well, uh... see, it's, it's something about when you know who Jesus is, the better you know him, it will also give you the capability to better make him known. And that's our goal. It, it, it brings me to the cause for this series, and I've been sharing this, Every week of why I share this is because as a young boy, my grandmama used to say, I know too much about him to doubt him. And I didn't understand she was dealing with cancer. She was dealing with issues in her body. She had all kind of financial issues. But she said, I know too much about him to doubt. And so as a young boy, I'm like, God, what's going on? And it's been my life pursuit to know so much about Jesus and to share it with the world as well. And so that's what brought us to our foundation of Scripture in John chapter 14. You can go there with me right now. And we're going to share it again. I I see something different every time I read it. I spent four weeks on each word described in this text. But now I'm in the latter part of it because I want to get us to the understanding where we really know him. Somebody shout, really know him. See, I want you to really know him that when you call his name, when you face issues of life and you put his name on it, that you ain't just dropping a name. But the response that he demands will be the same response your issues will have to respond to. And I thank God for this because in verse number 6 of John 14 is when Jesus was answering his d- d- doubting disciple. But I believe he's talking to us today. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way. Somebody shall he is the way. So we spent four weeks on the way. We shared with that what, what that was, and the truth. Can y'all shout, and the truth? We spent four weeks there. It says, and the life. Can y'all say the life? We spent about three weeks there. But this is what I want to emphasize because we hear this, but I want to make sure we emphasize this. It says, no one comes to the Father except through or by me. This is so important, y'all, because sometimes we're trying to get to God without going through Jesus. You know, we're trying to get that relationship back. And I I shared back in Genesis chapter 3 when we once had the privilege to run up to God at the cool of the day and just love on him. But sin crept in. Sin entered our life. We were exiled from the garden. And then now God established a redemptive plan to bring us back to him. And it was no longer us to say, let me eat off the tree of life and gain eternal life back. It was now a pathway we had to take. And that way is through Jesus that would now guarantee our fellowship with God again. Here's his redemptive plan. He says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Seven says, if you really know me. Can y'all shout, if you really know me? He says, you know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And so last week, we started from the subject that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Can y'all shout, Jesus is is. the Alpha alpha. and the Omega. Omega. Now, the point I'm emphasizing here this morning, and I started this on last week, is to give you the example of the through way. He says no one comes to the Father, God, except through. So the through, the passageway, is the establishment of who Jesus is. And I, I, I went to Genesis, I've been to John, and now I'm going to Revelation. Go to Revelation with me real quickly. And we're going to bring this thing whole, hopefully to, to some, some light today, and we'll continue this on. We're in the series so we can keep going as we run out of time. Amen. But look at what it says. So I want to talk about he's the Alpha and the Omega. And so last week I was talking about he's not Alpha through Omega, he's Alpha and. Uh, He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Now, this is why this is so important when Jesus establishes in John 14 that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through. Somebody shout through. So he is the way. He's the passage way. So you you got to be able to look at this. In order to get through, you got to have proper communication. So so you, you don't run up on Jesus and say, There is a word 
and a response required of us. That's why I had to emphasize this, that he is the Alpha and Omega. And as we go to Revelation chapter number one, many Christians I meet say that they have never read Revelation. Many reasons ponder in my mind of why, but when I ask sometimes the reason why, many have told me it scares me. How many of y'all heard that before? Like, that scared me. They got, they got dragons in there. You know, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I'm like, you should want to know what God has to say about your life and his ultimate plan for you. Now, also I've heard, you know, I don't understand all of the seals, the signs, and the churches. The prophecies are confusing. But I understood that the truth in this book should not be studied in idle curiosity. See, a lot of time when we approach this book, the reason why it, it, it kind of frightens Christians or we heard that frightening word is that we can approach it in the wrong manner. See, a lot of times we're looking for things to try to grab out of. That's why I told y'all last week when I was preaching these guys I met in the mall, they took it to try to interpret it with idle curiosity and to twist those words up without understanding the context of it. And so what happens a lot of times, if you read it with curiosity, but not to keep the point, then you will not live this life that God has purposed in your life to live. Why? Because these words are to be kept obeyed and practice. Can you shout kept? Yes. Obeyed, obeyed and practice. Let me emphasize this. Let me make sure I make sure because when we get in, if you look at Revelation chapter 1, verse number 3, let's read it real quickly. This is what it says. Before we get into this thing and talk about he is the Alpha and Omega, it says here in verse number 3, it says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart. What is written in it because the time is. So when I understood this from this perspective, it really was letting me know that the time then and now indicates even the more that Jesus is a necessity in order to gain access to God. The book, this book closes the gap between what was, what is, and what is to come. And so when I looked at this, so I, I'm not looking at it from a curiosity perspective because I let to look at it from the perspective of why it was written. See, there was an emperor at this time that it was written called Domitian. And this emperor, he was one of the most cold-blooded killers. And what happened was he was so cold-blooded that he, 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 he rivals any other murderer on the historical pages. He was ruthless. And what happened was the king, the emperor Domitian, he was promoting emperor worship. And what happened was he began to announce with all the people our Lord and our God commands. This is what he, every time he talked to them, he says, our Lord and our God command because he was killing folks if they didn't see him as Lord and God. And so when you understand the John of Patmos that wrote this, well, how he became that God was that he was the one after Paul and Luke and all them planted churches throughout the region because people, when they planted churches, they had to have pastors. People that take over the church that kept the furtherment of the word, that's a word, amen, going forward, amen. And so what happened was the emperor, he did not want anybody else worshiping anybody else except for him. And so he went to John and exiled him to the island of Patmos. So here at this moment is when the, John got this revelation from an angel sent by God that Jesus spoke to directly to now give John the inspiration to pen these words. Amen. He demanded that people would address him as Lord and God. He was treating Christians and Jews badly. He exiled them. But I was reminded that it was this isolation that gave John this revelation. Anybody declare that over your life? Sometimes God has to isolate you to give you something in your life. Amen. I also believe that it's isolation that, that, that promotes elevation in your life. 
Sometimes we'll never even seek God until we by ourselves. To everybody turn their back on us when we don't have another way to communicate. Sometimes that's the only way God gets our attention. And so I believe that there was this moment. This was, so John, John was writing this. And so he said these words to be. This is why he wrote this. Because by the time we get to verse number eight, we see that he says it like this. He says that I am the Alpha and Omega. That emperor is not your God. That emperor is not your king. John had to reiterate this story to the people. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and is to come, the Almighty. Can y'all shout the Almighty? the Almighty? So look at this. I truly believe this because Revelation, check this out, is an orderly unveiling of Jesus and his final victory over Satan, sin, and the world systems. Revelation reveals God's plan to recreate, reconcile, and renew mankind to perfection that we saw back in Genesis. His goal is to get us in that fellowship again. Revelation reveals the orderly unveiling of this plan that God had from the moment that the serpent deceived woman. You can see the redemptive plan of God said that this woman will always be against you. That, he, she, that her son would bru bruise your head. That this redemptive plan was instilled in Genesis chapter 3. And you see right now God is saying the same thing. I need you to know that my son Jesus was at the beginning and he will be at the end. And when we understand this establishment of our faith, we can start walking in this. But the awesome thing about this is that the 404 verses that's in Revelation has direct reference to 278 verses from the Old Testament. So I can't just say Revelation chapter 1, verse number 8. Let me emphasize Isaiah 44, chapter 6. So when I bring these two together, I'm hoping I can make this point and we can get out of here in a second and we'll continue this on in the next weeks to come. But look what Isaiah 44 said where I left off on last week. It says, this is what the Lord says. Israel King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. That's the word Almighty again. I am the first. I'm shot. He's the first. He said, I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. No God. So he says here, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, references back to many of the other scriptures in the Old Testament that has the same context. He is declaring that he is, Jesus is, the complete knowledge base for all life. Life is too uncertain. We all believe that. That is unpredictable at times. For us to focus on anything else other than him. Why? Because only he knows the direction we are headed. How many know that Jesus is the only person in your tomorrow today? Like he's the only person in your tomorrow right now. So, right, right, so, you, so if you're thinking about if I should trust him or not, ask any of your friends, are they already in your tomorrow? So it, it, should, it should tell us that I need to trust this guy that says I'm at my beginning, huh? because your beginning gone. I'm going to get there in a minute. He's the only person that's in your tomorrow right now. He's declaring that he's the knowledge base of life. Omega, Alpha and Omega is used to designate the comprehensiveness of God, implying that God includes all that he is and will be. Why? Because there's never been a time that he wasn't. He always been and he always will be. It shows us that Jesus is eternal. Can y'all shout, he is eternal. He is eternal. He's everlasting. But check this out. Jesus has to be eternal in order to lead us to eternity. If he wasn't eternal, it would be impossible for him to give us the roadmap that leads to eternity. Because eternal means lasting and existing forever. And eternity is hopefully where all of us want to make it one day. And that's an unending time. And so it takes somebody that can, can, that can transcend or has been at the beginning of time to show us how not to waste our time so that we can get to God's forever for our life. Amen? Because the Alpha and Omega it signifies this. Look at this. Every letter. Can y'all shout every letter? So when Jesus says, I am, I'm, I'm hoping this is what I'm trying to get to. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He's saying this, I encompass every letter. 
Because I discovered letters make words. And Jesus is the word. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? So it takes letters to make word. Jesus is the word, which shows that the word is what Jesus encompasses, which says that Jesus is all knowledge. But I need y'all to hear this. Jesus is the fulfillment of the revelation and the intelligent communication of God. In other words, the only language that God speaks and understands is the language where Jesus is in it. If Jesus isn't in your language when you talk to God, then God is not obligated to respond to what you're asking him for. That's why he says, I am every letter which makes up every word, so you know that I am all knowledge, and I am the sole communicator. That means that if you don't talk to me, if you don't get that word to me, that's why I don't care what prayer you pray, if you don't say in Jesus, amen. I, you can say all you did was throw words out in the atmosphere, and that's exactly what it's going to say. That's why you have to believe in him and know him for yourself, so that when you speak words, because he is all word, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the logos, the verb of God, the logic of God, everything that God is, is in Jesus. And so that when we speak God language, we got to be talking about Jesus. And he had to be at the beginning of our conversation, and we got to end with him. This is why it's so important, y'all. We got to make sure of this. This is why Jesus, he says, I am the way. You ain't going to get to God unless you come through me. You got to speak my language. You got to talk the language. You got to speak the words that I would speak. Because the only language God speaks, because he solidifies that he is through, that through him we must go through in order for us to establish intimacy with God again. It will come upon in your life where you don't feel close to God. It may be because you don't feel close to Jesus. Because so many times we're trying to get this intimate, man, I mean, Christian, man, I pass on, man, I don't feel close to God as I used to. I said, so where's Jesus at in this? Have you really been communicating and establishing, following his ways? Do you, not, do you know that what you're facing right now isn't the first issue that God ever had to deal with? So why the first thing you stop doing is stop serving Jesus? When problems happen in your life, why you forsake him? You'll never gain intimacy with God if you ain't communicating with Jesus. If he's not in your tongue, if he's not in your heart, if he's not in your mind on a consistent basis, because when you look at the alpha, your beginning has already been complete. And how many know that you can't go back and be born again? I mean, spiritually you can't. But how many know that where you started, you can't go back? Yeah, yeah. Like, say for instance, you at church right now, if you left home and didn't make up your bed, it ain't going to make up itself. <laughs> See, yo, this is why I had to understood, stand this a little bit more. He says, I am the alpha. He says, I am already what you were. Because some people keep against you what you, what, what you once were. But he says that your omega is still being written. He says, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That's why he declared he who began, oh, y'all going to get this, a good work in, he will complete it at the day of, he's saying that I don't care what you once were. Because I am the alpha. And I ain't finished writing your story yet. Your beginning is gone. But your end, you still got to pray. That's why, that's why God hasn't destroyed the world yet. Because he left a remedy here. So that we can get our life. He's giving us chance. Every day he wakes us up. He said, I'm giving you another chance to get your life right. I can come back right now if I want to. But I'm giving you another day. I ain't wrote you off yet. I ain't closed the book on you yet. I haven't established my omega in your life yet. I haven't brought the end time to your life. So he's saying every day you wake up, give your life to Jesus. 
Worship him freely. Get, get your life right. Say, I've given you a plan to bring you back to my love and my life and intimacy with me instantly. How many of you, when you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, your destiny changed immediately? So that's why he says in his revelation here that everything, so he shows us that in the process of him being eternal, that he is alpha because he knows he's saying, man, you can't go back in time. He said, you can't go back and redo some stuff, because some of us wish we can go back to high school. <laughs> amen. You, amen. I told somebody, he said, man, he said, man if, I went back and, if I went back to high school with the, with the knowledge I know right now, boy, I'd be the pastor. I said, no, you'll mess your life up, because you'll know too much. You'll be in school talking about, I know that already. You'll be kicked out the first day of high school. But like, Somebody trying to tell you 40 years old, you go back to being 18, you're going to be like, you can't tell me nothing. So you'll get in more trouble, and you'll learn less lessons. And that's why God, you, you say, God, I can't go back in my past. You got that. You got that stuff. That's what makes you alpha. What I'm right now, when I came into, when you came into my life, that's when I started working on my life. That's when I was working on making to see God again. And when I made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, that's when my destiny changed. But it also lets me know that not only is Jesus eternal, it also shows me that Jesus is sovereign. Somebody shout, Jesus is sovereign. Let me tell you why this is so important. Because the sovereignty of God represents that he has supreme authority and power. Well, check this out. He has total autonomy. In other words, when he woke you up this morning, he didn't need your help. I know you thought it was the iPhone, because mine rang at least 10 times. How many, how, how many of y'all, y'all like that demon called Snooze? That's a demon. Y'all know Snooze is a demon? It'll get you on purpose every time. Anybody else? It calls you to delay your purpose every moment. See, I, I tell you, the devil has too many tricks in our life. He ain't trying to cause us to get sick. He said, if I can make you late, if I can make you delayed, you can miss the opportunity that God had for you to open. Bam! God said, I missed that. And so I thought about God as sovereign. He's autonomy. God is God all by himself because it shows me that in his sovereignty as Alpha and Omega, he is everything and in everything at the same time. He's over everything and in it. That's why when David in the psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd, he said that not only is God above me, he's also among me. And so he had let us know that God is not always just your situation, he's also in your situation. Can I help you out? See, when you understand that God is Alpha and Omega, that he's sovereign, he's not just over your marriage, he's also in your marriage. Amen. God is not just over your finances, he what? He's in your finances. He don't just, he don't look over your affairs and look out for the traps that the enemy got for you. He's also guiding you, telling you exactly what's going on. He's not just over your money, he's what? He's in your money. He He's not over your health. He's also in your health. He's not just over your job. He should be. How many of you, when you are working and, and somebody wants you to respond in a way that's not like God, you can say God is somewhere in this. I can't, I can't act like I used to act because that was my alpha and God is doing something in my life right now. That's who I was and God dealt with that already. Oh, y'all ain't going to hear what I'm saying. Or oh, anybody ever, ever, ever had to tell yourself, that's who I was? You better be glad God already dealt with that. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. I have to remind people sometimes that you better be glad that God already dealt with that joker there. <laughs> if God had already dealt with him, it would have been the end for you. God, <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. God, I get him out. I'm glad God dealt with that apple guy. That's why he's God. You ever wonder how people get saved and just change? You ever look at people like, no, you wouldn't. Sometimes when you give your heart to Jesus, heart, I know some of y'all don't believe I was once a thug. <laughs> I used to have a bad attitude. I used to fight at the drop of a hat. And my, my, wife was, my wife was with me at least almost two and a half years before I got saved. 
You should have shot it right there. You should have negated. You should have been running across. And sometimes she look at me, who? What happened? You ever look at somebody and say, what happened to you? That was the alpha. The God that did that. Show me that he's over me and in me at the same time. And you can see the Alpha and the Omega played out in so many areas in our spiritual lives. That's why we call him the author. And the what? He don't only write the book, he closed the book of our faith. He's what we do it. He's all of that. He's over all those things. The Bible talks about he was the word in the beginning. He was pre-existent and co-existent at the same time. He was with God when they reached back into nothing and threw out a universe. He is the fulfillment of the law. That means the laws that we can't keep. The 613 laws that the Bible talks about in Ephesians, if you break one, you get to breaking them all. But through Jesus, who fulfilled every single one of them, all we got to do is believe that he is. And we fall under the grace of God when you can't keep the commandments, when you can't do what's right all the time, when you don't always think the right thing or say the right thing. Thank God for Jesus. These are things that you have to understand, that he's the fulfillment of that. He's the topic of, of discussion concerning our salvation. It is by faith in him and the grace of God that we are saved through our faith. So we got to believe that, walk in that. And understand that he is found in the first verse of the Bible and the last verse of the Bible. The first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 1 says what? In the beginning, who? John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with who? And the word was? So Jesus was dead in. Last verse in Revelation, Revelation 22 and 21, says, For the grace of the Lord Jesus will be with you. How long? Always, I believe God. says, For the grace of, God, of the Lord Jesus Christ be with God's people. Amen. Somebody. Because God says that I have been there from the Alpha, and I'm still writing this thing out. He said, But I pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people, and I just add this in the, at all times, in all situations, in all circumstances. See, I don't know when you need God to be with you. I don't know when you need Jesus to step in the gap and fill some things up or give you the understanding that you need. I believe that when you understand who Jesus is, it shows you that he was there when it all started and he had a plan to complete this thing in our lives because everything we need is found in Jesus. He's the totality of our salvation. Every word we speak shall represent him. Everything coming out of our mouth, every thought in our head shall represent who. See, if you, if you, when you know Jesus, you'll think about him before you speak. Amen. You'll think about him when you're thinking. Yes. Oh, my God. Anybody ever had to change your thought? Yes. Or anybody? God, God, keep my mind straight. Yes. Let this mind be in who? Me. What was what? Anybody ever had to say that in your mind before you even say, God, I need for you to make my mind right. What was that mind that was in Christ Jesus? The mind to go through some stuff. When folks talk about you, when folks turn their back on you, when things are going good, things are going bad, God, I got to have the right mind so that if I got the right mind, I got the right response. Oh, so he's in everything. So every time, it's time out for us having oopses. Is that a word? Bless you. Is oopses a word? Y'all know, y'all trust Webster? It's like, uh, it's it time out for us believers that, oh, I just, God said, hold on, you, you had me in that thought. If you consulted me, you would have, that, 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 the, the end result would have been me because of who I am and who I represent myself to be. 
And so I just praise God for you all every day. I'm going to continue this on. The next week I got out of time. But I thank God so much because as we go in this, I'm going to talk about who Jesus is. Again, I'm going to take, take it to the next level of this alpha. I'm going to deal with the latter part of this as I go into another segment of this. And so I pray that you understand that he is the God who is, was, and is to come. And if you trust him in that manner, you'll see your life change for the greater. Would you stand today?